In the modern days, hunting has become a sport basically for everybody. There is also a really big community about target shooting or every kind of competition shooting. And there are a lot of really affordable rifle systems, which basically everyone can own, which are really, really accurate up to high distances and which are also perfectly suited for all hunting applications. You can outfit a 600 buck Ruger American with a 1600 buck scope and you have a real good application in 308 Winchester which is basically accurate up to 600-700 meters, maybe even longer if the conditions are right. The Remington 700 is also around for a really long time now and still today it has one of the best ratios when it comes to price for accuracy. This one is chambered in 300 Winchester Magnum, so really good cartridge for long distance shooting and really affordable as well. Like in the old days, one of the most accurate and best hunting rifles are sporterized surplus rifles, like this Mosin here. And yes, it's a 1940s Mosin Agant in a pretty traditional European hunting stock with a muscle brake and a scope on it. Still shoots the same caliber though. Even on the much more simple weapons like this 12 grade shotgun here, the time have left its marks. Most models you see today are in an over-under configuration like this one here, but this design has not been around forever. So I think most of you are familiar with modern rifles, modern shotguns, but today we will take a look at the past. There was a time where hunting was just for royal people and noble people, and shooting by the common man has been just during the war or on poaching trips. The idea of a long-range rifle uh, has been something like this. Poachers used short and concealable take down rifles. There have been also conversions from military rifles uh, for hunting, like this one. And shotguns looked mostly like this one. Hey and welcome to the post-apocalyptic garage. Many of you are familiar with all shapes and sizes of modern hunting rifles, especially bolt actions and shotguns. But today we want to take a look into the history book of European hunting rifles. The most hunting rifles around the turn of the century has been modified 98 Mauser systems. The most noticeable modifications are the triggers on every one of these rifles. They are hair triggers which has to be manually cocked. On every one of these you see the two trigger system, it's called the French system. So what you want to do in the French system is pulling the back trigger, then the front trigger is cocked and it needs just a little little tiny amount of weight to set it off. In comparison you've also had the German system, for example on this Mannliche Luxus here. On the Mannliche Luxus you just take the trigger to the front and now it is cocked. You fought collapsible cheek pieces, uh, modern inventions, so take a look at this. So this one is one of our oldest examples of the modification of the 98 Mauser system. Actually, this gun was built before Mauser started the production of the 98 system. The 98 system was, like the name suggests, developed in 1898. And this rifle actually is an 1899, so it looks like someone has stolen the plans from Mr. Mauser. <laughs> also the scope which is on here is much older than the rifle itself. It's a long gone company out of Berlin in Germany. It had a 7x magnification, it was built around 1870 and it gives you really really nasty cuts in your eyebrow because this rifle is chambered in 7x64 and the scope has basically next to no eye relief. In the old days, Austria was not only known for outstanding handmade rifles, but also for the two biggest rifle optics company at this time. There was Swarovski, which is still based in Tyrol, and there is Kales, which was based in Vienna, or is still based in Vienna. And basically, with the introduction of rifle optics for hunting, these two companies ruled Europe for decades. But of course, optics were not so reliable as today. So like you can see perfectly in this one here, 
nearly every hunting rifle at this time had iron sights. And most of you will wonder right now why you have iron sights when you have an optic mounted on a rifle like this. Today it doesn't have it anymore. Most of these rifles have actually holes in the bottom of the mounts. So what you're basically doing is looking beneath the scope and you have a perfect line of sight with your iron sights. And most of the iron sights this time were also adjustable, mostly for 100 and 300 meters, some up to 600 meters. So this was a really good option when you have to shoot very fast or when your scope was broken. Many converted 98 rifles has been chambered um, with the caliber 6.5 by 57. And most of them have really long barrels for such a small caliber. So the 6.5 by 57 was a really really good flat long distance projectile even when it was really light. They were shooting mostly projectiles from 6 gram to a maximum of 8.5 grams but with a velocity of over 1000 meters per second at the muzzle. So a really good, really flat shooting direction and in a modern hunting application these rifles are easily take down any game up to 300 meters and more. I think you proved it one or two times, haven't you? Maybe, I think so. <laughs> Many of you maybe remember this rifle here. We introduced to you in our Q&A video. It's also a modified 98 system, chambered in 7x64, and her name is Kati. <laughs> what you will notice immediately on this rifle is that it has a very very skinny barrel for a 7mm projectile, but on a hunting rifle this is no problem at all. In real life hunting a situation this is not a problem because you can easily shoot one to three times. The barrel will get a little bit warm but it's really far away from getting hot and this rifle have proved some shots up to 600 meters taking down game so really good application on this one. What I really like on this rifle is uh, the heavy engravement on the wood and metal parts as you can see here. And what's also unique for the time the rifle was built namely 1920, around 1920, is the really pronounced pistol grip, which not many rifles had at this time. This particular rifle has been handmade by a gunsmith in Salzburg in Austria. But it still has the basic components of a Mauser. And also when you look down here beneath the scope mount, you can still see the notch for the loading strip, which was in the military version, to put in your loading strips and load your weapon with it. So definitely 98 system modification, but really maxed out to the top for this time. Also big plus for this rifle is the big magazine capacity. We have here a 5 plus 1. What's really unique on this K98 modification is that the original wing safety here behind of the bolt was removed and there was put a sliding safety which is activated with your thumb in place with a beautiful S which was inlaid in 24 karat gold in the rifle for safe, so really unique system, really fine rifle. What is also mostly related to modern guns is the rectangle shaped front part of the stock. Yeah, you have it on the SSG-08, you have it on the L96, so most long distance accurate rifles have rectangle shaped foregrips. And this one have it too. It's inlaid with ivory and out of beautiful wood, but for long distance shooting and for getting a good grip when shooting standing up, it's a really good option. Due to the skinny barrel and the heavyweight 98 system, this rifle is very well balanced. So even when you shoot from a standing position or at really long ranges, it's really easy with this rifle to stay on target and to take quick follow up shots on multiple targets as well. There were many times in history where food was not really available for everybody. Most of the times the reason for great depressions were wars, especially here in Austria at the late 1800s and early 1900s. 
people of our land have also a really big problem. Hunting was forbidden for the common man, so only the royals had the right to hunt for wild game. As there were very limited food sources, people start poaching just to survive. And poaching got to a really big scale here in Austria, but it was very dangerous as well. Every hunter can shoot a poacher in cold blood and will not be charged anything. The poachers looked for small and considerable takedown rifles. They were mostly chambered to a small caliber to reduce the noise to a minimum. A really popular caliber, like on this one here, was 5.6 by 50. It had very similar dimensions to a modern 5.6 later round, but it was powerful enough to take down nearly every game that we have in the area at this time. But they got even smaller, in this case, 22 Hornet, a super-sized center-fired 22 long rifle. Both of these rifles here are tilting barrel single shot ones. We have a lever on the underside of the trigger guard here. Press it down, it will open. You have a little extractor in the back which helps you to extract fired cartridges. And you can get pretty fast with them. I heard of many occasions where the hunter have the second round between the lips and spit it into the barrel. Of course this was done by iron sighted versions where there was no scope in the way but due to history books on hunting and on poaching they were able to get out at least two shots in under 1.5 seconds so with a rifle like this I think they were really good at what they are doing which is also very interesting on this particular rifle is the unique safety it has the style of a wing nut and you turn it to the right and it's unsafe you turn it to the left and it's on fire. You have also the possibility to fine tune the trigger with this little screw between the two triggers. This one is taken apart by a system which many of you will remember from some disassembly levers from pistols. To disassemble it you just have to put the lever down like this. Then you can extract the bolt and Fold the rifle in two basically so it can be easily stored away in the backpack or something like this. But unfortunately due to the age of the rifle it's very hard to get this bolt out and we don't want to ruin anything. So we let it in for now but I think you basically get the concept. On this one the same folding system like at the other one. But here we have uh, thumb safety. And also very, very interesting engravements in the wood here on the stock, as you can see. The scope what we have here is a Mark 12 from Weatherby, 4x50. And I think it's enough for distances up to 100 meters, for sure. It's a, bit, it's a very good rifle. This one is one of my favorite rifles when it comes to potato hunting. The most unique part on this rifle is the octagon barrel, which doesn't seem like much on the first view, but it's actually an old muzzle loader barrel, which was bored out on the entire length, and a smaller caliber insert was hammered in, maybe with a heat shrink fit or something like this. On the front of the muzzle you can still see the separation line between the outer layer of the barrel and the inner layer, so very interesting on this one. Back here on the receiver, the bigger barrel was just milled down to fit in the stock and I think because of this early modification, this rifle is a really unique piece. When it comes to shotguns, most of them were 12 gauge, double barreled side by side with just a little dot in the front for aiming. When there was a safety at all, it was mostly a sliding thumb safety and nearly every one of them had two separate triggers, one for each barrel. What you will also notice immediately when looking on old shotguns like this is that the barrels are very strong tapered to the front to get much tighter shot groups. And the problem with them of course being side by sides is that the right barrel will always shoot a little bit to the left and the left barrel will always shoot a little bit to the right. 
Of course, experienced hunters were aware of this problem and just adjusted their point of aim. When it comes to aiming with such a little beat in the front and no rear sight at all, it's very important to know how to handle your shotgun. Maybe the most important thing is to know your shotgun. Every time when you bring it up to your cheek, you have the same line of sight. Of course, both of them are brake actions. Both of them have an extractor at the bottom here of the barrel and also both of them are handmade in France. Most funny thing when you have some of these old cardboard shells from the shotguns. At the time it was a very special thing that it has smokeless powder. It was the base of every advertisement you have in these rounds. And there were also a new kind of primer developed at this time. It was the Chevalot which is French and I have basically no idea what it means, but it was a very big thing at the time. And what was also developed around 1910 to 1920 was that the powder was not corroding the barrel. Many of your surplus rifle owners know that especially old surplus ammunition has the tendency to corrode the barrel a lot because of the content of the powder. And this little round here, which is from 1925, was state-of-the-art at this time. I hope you liked our little comparison from the old to the new. If you want to learn more about a particular gun, be sure to let us know in the comment section below. Also, if you're interested in the history of rifles and also in the future of gun laws in Europe, show it to us via a like on this video. So, that was it for today. Stay tuned, hit like and we'll see us next time. Goodbye guys.